Hello, welcome to Flat Earth Admiral, please press the red subscribe button to get notification on our video update. Proof that the sky have gates where the rockets pass through to space. A spacecraft is being aimed to arrive at a certain point in space e.g. intercept the moon orbit, and there are ideal times to do this to give minimal flight times and fuel consumption. The period of time between the earliest and latest possible launch times is called the launch window. Engineers also refer to such timings as gates, but usually for shorter times. Someone has heard these terms used and made a very simplistic assumption without thinking through. The spaceship can be launched from any place on Earth. According to the article I read that Russia can't launch spaceships from Russia as these gates or windows are not there so it has to launch from Kazakhstan as these gates or so-called windows are there. The best launch sites are near the equator because the Earth is spinning faster there, surface speed, and this gives a rocket a significant boost compared to near the poles and so saves fuel. Nearer the poles the size of rocket compared to payload may make it impossible to achieve a launch. Another possible interpretation is space port space gate, and maybe it is more literal than that in Russian? Countries like to keep their expensive, and often secret, space probes in areas they control. With the right infrastructure, which takes years to construct with a clear path over areas with a low population. Aligned to put the satellite into a useful orbit. So although you could launch a satellite from anywhere on the Earth, in practice, some parts are better than others. The French launch from Kourou, over the ocean. This is almost on the equator, which is ideal for geosynchronous satellites. NASA often launches its civilian satellites from Florida over the sea. It is not so close to the equator, so it takes more fuel to reach geosynchronous orbit. However, Earth-observing satellites need to go into a polar orbit, so Florida is not so useful either. U.S. military satellites are often launched from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, presumably because it is more secure. The Russians used to control Kazakhstan, and it has a low population of Russians. Because much of Russia is near the North Pole, an equatorial orbit is not so useful, so they often launch satellites with high inclination and high eccentricity, like the Molniya orbit. There is some international tension with space launches from China and North Korea, which tend to pass over parts of Japan. During the Cold War, the passion to install ICBM rockets everywhere meant that small launch facilities were built all over the world, including on ships and submarines, ready to launch at a few minutes' notice. I noted that the Gravity Probe B spacecraft needed to be in such a specific orbit that the launch window was only one second long. The Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963 outlawed nuclear explosions in the atmosphere or outer space, and considerable monitoring is in place to detect violations. There have been numerous space probes launched since then, so we can be sure that nuclear blasts are not required to reach outer space. There have been nuclear-powered spacecraft, including the current Mars Curiosity rover and most missions to the outer solar system. It is likely that long-term manned missions to the planets will require nuclear power. But nuclear explosions are not a desired byproduct of these applications. Frequent nuclear explosions in the upper atmosphere or in sublunar altitudes would definitely have dramatic effects on signal transmission due to the EMP generated with each explosion and the energetic particles released. Thank you for watching this video please remember to press the red subscribe button.